guess the plan was uh, just forget about it. Uh, you didn't even need to really conceal. If you just kill the thing, you have enough damage with the uh, Dark King Golem no matter what. I still have the fan. The fan just clears the yeah. taunts. It's, it's way, way, way over lethal. Yeah. Bacaldi drops the first game here. A very um, fast game here. Very, very, very fast indeed. Opting to not BM. Uh, let's see here. So, so Savi's banned the Warlock and the Druid is out. And that makes it so he has to choose from Warrior and Shaman. And that pretty much just narrows it down to Warrior. And we've seen this uh, this matchup a few times here. I think... I think more yeah. times than not, it's actually gone the Rogue's way, even though we predicted the yeah. Warrior to win. Yeah. Either way, it's a very close matchup, the, uh, the Rogue and the Warrior. It all just depends on the draws. Alright, well, we're going to see that match. Um, I think we're going to take a little bit of a break here. Even though uh, it's it's not live, we're going to try to keep it uh, consistent with the rest. So we'll be back uh, in a couple minutes for game two. And we're back. We've got to see uh, game two, Saviz versus Kaldi. Uh, Saviz took the first game um, with a pretty nice uh, rogue game. I have to say, I think I mentioned it before in terms of but rogue is one of those classes I can just watch someone play all day. You know, all, all the fun stuff with the cards, all the combinations. 
you know, it, it kind of keeps me guessing. And after playing Hearthstone for so long, that's, that's something that just doesn't exist with any other class. So, I don't know, I, I, I kind of get a bit of the thrill. I'm kind of glad the Rogue made it through a little bit. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Rogue, too. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite classes. It's always the most exciting class to watch. Nothing else can just miracle like that. <laughs> so we did predict that Kaldi would pick the Warrior, and there it is. And there's Mr. Garrosh. Victory or death. Well, it is it is going to be one of those. Yep. What do you think about getting rid of everything? Is he just aggressively trying to get an Auctioneer? You have to aggressively get Auctioneer against... Uh, it's just the... Uh, the one card that you absolutely need to uh, outgrind the warrior, because most of their cards are pretty pretty good when it comes to value. So if you just go card for card with them, that's a Sylvanas. Yeah. It's not not the greatest opening card, but definitely one of the cards you want against uh, a rogue. If it doesn't get sapped, it's usually going to get a lot of value. It's it just feels like one one of the ways that you win. Is yeah. by stealing a stealth auctioneer. One of those shield slams? Yeah. Not execute. Nope. Nope. As it turns out, it doesn't work. Card must be bugged or something. They need to fix that next patch. Yeah, I, I swear I've seen that play in a tournament in the past, but no. Yeah, me too. What do you think of shield block here? I think it's okay just because your, your hand kind of sucks right now. Yeah, you need to find better cards, so I can get behind it. 3-3, uh, three, three, trying to just oh, test for Oh, there it is! Yeah. Stars are lining up for him right now. He's got the Sylvanic Shield Slam combo. Okay, yeah, we, we haven't seen this match, but um, I am predicting a Shield Slam Sylvana Steal a Stealth Auctioneer play gonna happen this game, calling it. I think that's good uh, enough for a Sengen. Yeah. An open board Sengen. Never bad. Well, you can choose to use Deadly Poison or Backstab here. Either way, he's attacking in, so... I guess he could Deadly Poison and Backstab, but I kind of want to see the, um... SI play. Oh wow. Okay. Well, with this play, he uses his more expensive spells and uh, conveniently draws the card to use his cheap spells. But not so conveniently, my prediction may come true. Dang. <laughs> well, maybe he kills it. Or maybe he doesn't. Well, we both know we want to see it happen. <laughs> ah, damn it. I think he's just going to do it anyway. Yep. Man. Kaldi Cald is probably not too happy right now. He's like, damn, I almost stole him. <laughs> almost got him real good. But, uh, I mean, he, he drew the, the next best thing. He drew the, the Lothab last turn, so... Yeah. He, he's still in pretty good shape. Shape, I'd say. Being able to throw down the Lothab there <clears throat> is exactly what you want from the, uh, the I mean, warrior you, perspective. You can do Lothab and armor up. Yeah. Follow it up next turn with uh, Ragnaros. You're pretty excited to be the warrior in this game. Yeah, you really have all the tools you need. Well, you can prep something, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. There's a terrible backstab. It's the most expensive backstab ever. Alright, But it, now... did, it did the job, right? So... Yeah. Ragnaros is pretty fun. Yeah, I think we're going to probably see the more safe play of just attack and Taskmaster. 
I think the nicest play is just dropping the Gromash. Oh. I mean, that's five. He has to deal to it. We already saw one Eviscerate. He hasn't drawn much off the Auctioneer. Yeah. Ground would I mean, be pretty... It's not like you need damage. You have Ragnaros for that. Yeah. It also puts a threat on the board, so it could work out pretty nicely. Yeah, I mean, a Cruel Task just gets killed by nothing. Yeah. And you get to keep your weapon. It's not like you have another one right now. I think Gromesh is actually by far the easiest play here. I kind of want to see the Ragnaros. There's no way. Oh, uh, there's no way, but it would be pretty exciting. You have a good chance at actually winning in two turns. You play the Ragnaros and hits face. Or it hits the Auctioneer. Goes for the lame shield slam. Lame. Mm, that is a bit lame. Blood Mage SI for sure. Alright. He's, he's just trying to draw that second auctioneer to draw the rest of his deck, but... Belt to draw here is pretty how good. How can he really win? Because, like, his, his whole deck... Like, Saviz's deck is, is not based on killing the opponent in one turn. It's based off of killing him in, like, two turns using a conceal. But the Brawl counters that. Like, he had the Sylvanas counter to, draw, to drawing too much with the Auctioneer. He had the Lothab counter to the Auctioneer. And now he has the Brawl counter to, like, the, the setup for the kill. Yeah. I, I just what don't I... see how Saviz can actually... 234 damage this game anymore. Uh, the one way I see is uh, you go for the Arcane Golem, double Cold Blood, uh, attack Conceal base, set. Yeah. and then hope and pray. It is the winning play though. Okay. And you gotta always respect the guy for making the winning play. That's true. The question is, do you deadly poison? I think the you do. I think you need, yes. I think you need the damage over two turns. The only oh. problem with this play is you're just stonewalled by another, another taunt. Uh, yeah. You're also not setting up for lethal right now. You need yeah. two more damage. Yeah, but you gotta go with what you're given. No. <laughs> okay, he he's gonna go for the Ragnaros. That'd I be my play. Belcher just feels like if you get sap, you're like, you're kind of bummed. Oh, what about this? What about Belcher Brawl? If you win, you win the game. If you lose, you still don't die. It's pretty fancy. That's for sure. More than I think about it, I actually like, like it. If you're going to take a 50-50... Might as well take that 50-50, right? Yeah. They opt to just play the Belcher. Oh, well, turns out you would have died. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, combo in there wouldn't have done anything. To the face! So now I feel your play is Brawl, and then whatever lives, execute. Yeah.
Yeah, I think the uh, the brawl execute keeps you alive no matter what. This play is fine too. Okay. Gotta win somehow. Killed an auctioneer draw here in a chain of spells. Something might be possible. Yeah, absolutely. Nine cards left. Can Savage find lethal? Oh, it turns out he's dead. Yep, Gromash kills him, no matter what. Oh, that was, that was a good effort. Yeah. Had Sabi's drawn uh, an Auctioneer there instead of the Cleafster. Something may have been possible. What exactly? I don't know. I think he used Maybe. both Eviscerates. I think he had one Cold Blood left. And maybe a deadly poison? Uh, yeah, he would have. He could have had the damage to finish the game if he drew Octane. Mm hmm. He certainly needed a string of draws, though. Yeah. The miracle. Well, well played by uh, by Caldi. Uh, Warrior, definitely the right class to uh, counter pick that. Um, I think we're uh, going to take a short break before we get into the third game, but just to recap, the score is 1-1. One, one. Uh, Kali had banned Saviz's Hunter, Saviz dropped the Rogue, so Saviz against Warrior gets to pick his Warrior or a Warlock, which we've already seen previously in the tournament is a Handlock. And uh, I think I'd go with a Handlock. But, uh, oh yeah, see. against Warrior for sure. All right, guys. Well, we'll be uh, we'll be right back, and we'll get that match started in a few minutes. Alright guys, we're back. Game 3 is about to start. We have uh, Saviz, who had his rogue deck just knocked out. He's got to find an answer to the warrior. I think he's going to find it in Warlock. Warlock tradition does very well against uh, control warriors. This is Handlock, of course, which we know he's playing from the previous games in the tournament. And uh, it mostly has to do with, uh, you know, kind of playing sloppy and getting out brawled is you know generally the way that you lose this matchup uh the other ways is uh, i would like to grow mash but often your taunts tend to stop that so i don't know what would, what would you think uh if you did pick the warlock uh his chances would be as the warrior uh as the warrior i don't think there's much chance the later that it goes um if the game goes really late Jaraxxus is pretty much impossible for a warrior to beat. Uh, those 6-6s six every turn is just too much to handle for a deck that tries to outgrind its opponent. Mm -hmm. But if he can get an early board control, 
maybe drop big game hunter early, get the uh, the right cards, as it were. Uh, he might be able to set up some legendaries and win the game. That's kind of how you have to. Well, there's a lot of uh, early game that the warrior has, but it mostly has to do with removing creatures, not so much um, dealing damage with them. The ghoul is a very good example of that. Yeah, absolutely. The snowball with um, Acolyte and Taskmaster, or Armorsmith, Taskmaster. Yeah, it's kind of a pain for the you know, the warlock to deal with because if, if you have the uh, the acolyte taskmaster, you're just drawing so many cards, you get the answers that you need. It still feels like there's there's more creatures to deal with than answers in the warrior deck. For sure. So you, you kind of have to like outdraw the warlock to really even up. Yeah. Do you like keeping the ghoul here? You have to assume that your opponent's playing handlock. Um, no, actually, you have to keep in mind that this was the first match of the tournament, so you, you actually had no, no additional information from anything. If you're Kaldi, that well, is. Well, yeah, but would you want to go Zoo into... I mean, yeah, if you draw... You are... Powerful. Oh, you're cutting in and out a little bit there. But yeah, if... If you were playing Zoo, you probably wouldn't play it over a warrior deck against the warrior, I suppose. Yeah. Well, this is the, uh, the tap all the way to turn four mountain giant play. It's a it's a good line. Uh, so far, I believe it's going to work. There is no removal for a mountain giant in Kaldi's hand. No removal in sight. Dang. Actually, there is. It is a... Oh, it goes with the Drake. I yeah, think I like... the removal is still the same. It's uh, armor up, shield slam, coin axe, axe face. Right? Yeah. Looks pretty terrible. Yeah, it's... It's not what you want. Uh, I like going with the Twilight Drake first. Uh, it typically baits out any removal, and if it doesn't get removed, it eats up all the armor. And then you can just tap giant. Like you want to outcard the uh, the handlock deck, or you want to outcard them as the handlock deck. So getting them to use all their removal on Twilight Drake, and it's not even your biggest threat, is like exactly what you want to be doing. Yeah. Plus every card you draw is draw closer to Jaraxxus. <laughs> yep, tap giant. Next turn, I wouldn't be surprised. We saw a ooh spellbreaker a little late there. I think the play here is actually a uh, Belcher, and if there's yeah. one more super annoying thing, you just brawl. If not, you Sylvanas. Yeah. This is like a really, really good. Warlock opener. Oh yeah. I don't exactly keep what up you with want. This. No. Do you like healing up your uh, mountain giant here? I really do. Yeah, looks like you went for it. Yeah. It doesn't really protect it from execute, and it kind of adds another thing on the board. Now that I think about it, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm curious why he wouldn't attack with the little ooze thingy. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. Just want the uh, the one damage, I suppose. Oh, wait, no. Oh. I mean, if it wins the brawl, you attack face anyway. There's Lord Jaraxxus, our Lord and Savior. And there's Low Theb. Yeah. Preventing no spells. Nope. But this warrior is in. Really bad shape right now. I think you have to Sylvanas and hope the Warlock hasn't drawn into silence. Which he hasn't. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. I think we're gonna see uh, just the Belcher play. Yeah, I think Belcher's a nice stonewall. 
load up with the Watcher as well. Yep. More, more crappy things for your opponent to, uh, to take the Oh my god. And, and there it is. I think it's time to do damage. Like, one brawl down, good to go. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah, it's time for the face race. Boom. This is not a race the Warriors gonna have a very good time. Oh, well, the big game, that that gives them another turn, I think. Yeah, a little bit of uh, a little bit of reprieve. You can kill both these taunts, kill the uh, kill the the giant, and then he's still looking at taking seven damage. Looks like. Oh, well, I think I think he's dead to the hand of the warlock. Yeah. Wow. What an absolutely is... dominant warlock this tournament. No, 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 you, you're not dead. I think you can ghoul. Ghoul armor. I think that keeps you alive. Yeah. What do you think about not killing the Watcher there? I think it's fine. I think you need to try and preserve your Sylvanas. You need some way to maybe get some board control after. Like the big game hunter, if it can get value. Isn't bad either. Mm -hmm. I like Argusing the uh, the two taunts, or the Sun Fury and the, uh, the Watcher. Actually. And just having like, a bigger taunt over the. Uh... Can he win here? No. I don't think so. No, this is a few damage off. Yeah, the Hellfire just doesn't work. No. You have to... I think the best play is... You Argus up the 2-3 and the Watcher, and then you Shadow Flame the Watcher to clear the board. Yeah. Even if you Shadow Flame the Watcher right now, it clears the board anyway. Oh yeah, because of the ghoul, Argus. right? Yeah, and then you Argus after. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. I forgot about the ghoul one damage. That's seven, that's nine, put your opponent at two. Yep, that's the play. Yeah, that's for sure, Argus. Yeah. Opponent's at two life. Uh, he has the Elastraza not to lose, but uh, that's not going to work. No. You're in this position as the warrior. You're already dead. Well, Kali is going to be on his final deck. I mean, we, we know he's dead. There's, there's just yeah. lethal in hand right now. Yeah. So, Sabi's going to take this game. Handlock beats the warrior. Not much of a surprise there. Uh, I think Kali's last deck. Uh, in uh, in the set here is the Shaman. And we did see Kaldi play, I believe. And he is playing... Um, I just remember having Lava Bursts, right? Yeah, I think so. So he's got to go Shaman. He's got the Lava Bursts. I mean, that, that is kind of the counter. If, if he drops that game, Kaldi... I mean, uh, Savis has to rely on his warrior, right? Yeah. Warrior doesn't do particularly good against that deck either. But even though even though Savis is up a game, this isn't too far from even. I don't feel. If the shaman gets a good. Pick up those removals. It is very very tough. Alright, well the game's starting up here. Seems to be a little bit lagged. But you guys have to remember this is this is pre-recorded. Um, nobody's actually seen this footage except for the uh, the production guy. Oh, that's pretty ugly I guess, but the Hellfire can go a long way. Yeah, the Hellfire is a pretty big deal in this matchup I'd say. 
that little totem is a pretty big deal too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow, we have a shadow flame and a hellfire. And a lightning storm. You plan to keep many creatures this game. Nope. Okay, so he is playing a lava burst version. Yep, I think we we saw the lava burst in a previous game. Yeah. I think here you just out. Yeah. Well, you have Back to out because if you tap, right? That, that puts yeah. you at 10 cards. So. But that puts it so you can uh, play the mountain that you just drew, which uh, makes it very good, in fact. The yeah, Shaman getting... has no answer to mountains. Uh, fortunately, uh, he doesn't have a Drake. But I think if he draws a Drake... You think if he draws a Drake, you play it here? No, I don't think so. I think uh, it's... Although it's not more likely for your opponent to have either one or the other, I think it's a lot worse if you get your uh, your Twilight Drake Earthshock, like four mana for one mana, it's just, it doesn't even up. Mm -hmm. Alright, where the, the early game garbage is hitting the board here. Yeah. I was actually thinking I might, might see a Hellfire, but I suppose you can just Hellfire if the Shaman decides to go face, and he might decide to go face. Yeah. It's looking likely. Oh man. Mortal Coil. I think I like the Hellfire Mortal Coil here. That's either that or the Faceless. Faceless what? The Mountain Giant. No I'm just... way. You don't think so? No. You didn't have an answer for the first one. Yeah, but your life is getting, like, really low. Yeah. Ooh. Hex is a good draw. Hex is a good draw. I think you have to play it, too. As bad as it looks. Yeah. So, I mean, he did have the out with the Lava Burst, but you don't want to overload yourself on a uh, potential Fire Elemental turn. And it's the same mana spent, and Lava Burst is, uh, well, Burst, Hex is not. You got you have the Earth Shocks for Burst if you want. Yeah. Oh, wow. You guys have a Lightning Storm, possibly Rock Biter play. Yeah. Wow. I don't really like that too much. Yeah, I don't like that either. I mean, it's it's one thing because you use more cards. Another one because you use a rock biter, which is burst. But uh, a third one that you can't actually cast anything next turn now. Yeah, it just seems really weak overall. Like making that play, like your hex is to kill giants. So if you have the hex, might as well use it to kill a giant. Like if you hex last turn, you have you just... two one ones here. You drop your your fire elemental here. And now you, you can't do that. Yeah, it's just this play is just a bit worse, quite a bit worse. He's got a lot of damage in hand. The ops to save the lightning bolt here, which I think I would. He just burst him down. Mm -hmm. But I think he values the one minion on the board maybe a bit more. It's just you feel so close to killing him. He's not that close though. Oh, he had uh, eleven damage with the uh, fire elemental plus lava burst plus lightning bolt. Yeah, he can't really do it in one turn, but like you could just fire elemental to face if you got him low enough. Yeah. Of course, you have to count for heals and stuff too. You sort of just try and put him towards a, a low enough life total that you can one-shot him with your burn spells. It's looking like not using the Hex here is really adding up. 
Yeah, I mean, last turn you could add a fire elemental on the board. Yeah. You'd, uh, yeah, you trigger a scythe and soul, but then, you know, you eat up the entire turn of the warlock. We'll have that lightning bolt. Yeah. You gotta play the molten here, right? Yeah. Well, you got a hex. And that Drake looks pretty nice, because playing a creature would be nice this game, but no, that, it's not possible, sorry. No, it doesn't quite add up. This overload is punishing Caldy so much. Yeah. It's just adding up every turn. He's putting himself even more out of range. Well, there's a few more taunts. That 5-6 is kind of a problem, because um, you can only really get through that with... Uh, <laughs> God. That's the you know what's good right now? Uh, Rockbiter. Yeah. Oh yeah, that card would be amazing here. <laughs> and uh, Lightning Bolt? Because he wouldn't have to use that, because he had the Fire Elemental. Oh yeah, for sure. As it and turns you're... out, I think he would have a two-turn lethal here. Yeah. yeah. Things would have actually worked out great for him, had he just kept the cards that he needed to win. Twilight Drake here, pretty good uh, for Shadow Flame. I think you'd rather... Shadow Flame, your Twilight Drake. Your opponent hasn't played uh, those cards in his hand just the whole game, so you kind of have to assume that your opponent's on uh, some Earth Shocks. He's going for Watcher Shadow Flame. Wow, that that might be a problem. Where did the taunts go? Even if he pushes in here, though, he's got uh, Jaraxxus and a bunch of heals. Yeah, but the Shaman is capable of doing 18 damage in one turn. Yeah, for sure. Actually, wait, with one Rock Fighter down. Yeah, he can actually play a lot yeah. more recklessly. No, with uh, one Rock Fighter down, you still have 18. It's Doomhammer, the other Rock Fighter, the last Lightning Bolt, Lava Burst. That's, 50, that's 10 mana, 18 damage. Yeah. Damn, I wanted to see that. Well, maybe next time he uses Hex. <laughs> nah. Tap, Drake, Shadow Flame, hit for 6. Or you can Siphon Soul if you really want to preserve your life total, but your opponent's already shown that he doesn't have any damage. What do you think about Lotheb, Shadow Flame Lotheb? Uh, I think it's all right. This play is also definitely really good. Soul firing, the Drake could be uh, probably well, you his might, best option. You might drop Jaraxxus though if you do that. No, I think you always drop Jaraxxus if you do that. Isn't that the rule? Oh yeah, it is. My bad. Jaraxxus is like uh, Armor Smith. He always gets singled out. I think Hearthstone just loves to give people the worst case scenario every single turn. Yeah. Yeah. So here if you're Caldy, man, you'd, you'd really like to uh, do some damage, but those Earthshocks are uh, more expensive than uh, the card you're killing. Yeah. That's pretty fancy play by Saviz. I, I can respect that. Oh yeah, he's, he's making... Uh... Pretty much perfect plays throughout this entire series. Don't expect any less from him though. He's doing a great job. Yeah, kill the kill the Drake. I would have liked to see the Earth Shock on the Fire. 
instead of just trading your Drake. Because, like, how do you win from here now? One that just has to hit it 18 times. Oh, okay. My bad. So far, so far. That is not lethal. No. No. That was one off lethal with the Jaraxxus and Soulfire not discarding the other Soulfire. Yeah. Oh man. Wow. If he had a Rock Biter instead of that Fire Elemental, that would be game. Dang. It was just uh, really adding up here for Kaldi. It's just snowballing so much here. Uh, is there any play here that gives you a chance at winning? There's the clear the board play, which gives you a chance at winning next turn. Yeah. But he might do the play a totem play. Nope, he does the clear the board play. And actually, this is this is decent. Like, uh, yes, yeah, the has the siphon soul, which is obviously getting played. Yeah, just putting putting him even here. Just completely out of reach now. And this gives Saviz a um, one out of seven chance to lethal here. Oh, he's going pretty, for it. Pretty amazing how much his Warlock is healed. Yeah, right? He's healed, what, uh, 9 points? At least. Oh, yeah, it has to be 9. There's the other Siphon Soul. I'd go for the Lethal. Looks like he's going to, too. Oh, you're and... right! Because <laughs> Jirax is... Yeah, but, uh, he knew all along. He was pretty useful there. That is the, the third point for Saviz. Saviz does actually um, win one of his sets. And if I remember correctly, on our schedule we had Kaldi drop the match that we cast. Did he not? Against Ignite? He did. Yeah. So Kaldi is 0-2. Saviz is 1-2. Ignite is 2-0. And Thais is 1-0. One -oh. One -oh. Yeah. So if Thice loses his next two matches... You'd if Thice loses his next two matches, that would be a three-way tie for everybody. That should be interesting. That's going to happen over the... Uh, I think it's actually all happening in the next day that we're doing this. The next day of the tournament is going to be the 27th. We're casting five matches. It's going to start with RDU versus Colento. Then it's going to be RDU versus Ostaka. Then it's going to be Colento versus Masan. Thice versus Ignite. Thice versus Kaldi. That's going to be on the 27th. On the 28th, we're going to get into the semifinals. And on the 29th, we're going to get into the uh, winners and losers finals. So still a lot of matches to be played. Uh, a lot of cool stuff left to be seen. Uh, in terms of the tournament, if you guys uh, missed any of the matches, keep in mind they are being uploaded to YouTube. There's going to be a link uh, somewhere in chat every now and then. Uh, again, I can't direct it exactly because the stream is delayed a few minutes. 